project. It's a 338 Lapua. Um, it's a Remington action that I uh, uh, opened up the bolt face on, put a Seiko extractor. Uh, I got a deal on a Douglas Double X uh, air gauge barrel. Uh, it's a pretty heavy barrel. It's uh, uh, the only one I could find that was long that anybody had in stock that was long enough for me. I wanted a pretty long barrel. Uh, this uh, finished out uh, with the brake is a little over 30 inches. Um, right or wrong, I've kind of come up with the idea that that uh, the Lapua likes a longer barrel like that. You can take advantage of some of the slower burning powders. Uh, at present, it's got just a Nikon scope on it. Uh, it will have a night force before long. Um, anyway, I'll show you some close-ups of the thing. Show you what I did to the bolt. This is a brake that uh, not entirely sold on. It, it's it's a good brake. It's very loud. Um, it. Uh, Cuts the recoil down about to, oh, I'd say the equivalent to a, a, a 308, you know, just a regular 308 Winchester. Um, the gun weighs 12 and a half pounds, or excuse me, the gun weighs 12 pounds with the scope, it's 13 and a half. Uh, it's really relatively light scope. Uh, by the time we get the night force on, it'll probably weigh close to 15 pounds, maybe even a little more. <laughs> um, that's the bolt handle I put on it, and uh, uh, you can see it's a laminated stock. I know a lot of guys don't like those, but I just love them. Uh, the guy I, I built this gun for uh, has got his old favorite gun. Um, has got several of these kind of stocks on him, and he just loves them, and so consequently. Uh, it was his choice, not mine to use it, but I'm very happy with it. The gun shoots good. It's really comfortable. Um, it doesn't feel as heavy as it is. Uh, it actually feels like you could, uh, you know, seriously hunt with it, which is what he's going to do. You know, of course, we're both pushing 60 now, and, and our idea of hunting uh, anymore is uh, a lot of ATV riding and things like that the day of packing the gun out in the brush is kind of uh, disappeared you might say we still do it occasionally and of course if we get something then of course we're out there in a minute i'll show you the groups group. the gun shot uh, this is cleaning between shots and and just bipod off a tailgate of a truck so it's it's uh not you know not all that uh uh, I mean, we didn't learn that much from it. Uh, there, uh, uh, the, the group on the right there is a three shot. Group on the left is four. Uh, that upper upper right hand uh, holes actually two holes, and the right hand hole and this one's uh, two together also. Uh, clean in between shots. I typically don't expect much better than this. Uh, you know. Uh, um, Actually, I haven't shot anything better than this off the tailgate of a car in quite a while. Um, anyway, that's the group that shot. Um, I'm anticipating it being at least a half minute angle gun. Um, these groups are shot at 100 yards, which almost every group I ever shoots at 200 yards. All the previous groups in my video have been 200 yards. But of course, they're shot off of a bench, not off of a tailgate. So this is just more to break the barrel okay. in. Than I hope you can see it. I was really worried about opening the bolt face up on the Remington that far, but you're really not even cutting out the entire old extractor groove. Uh, if you, as you can see, I've put a Seiko style extractor in there. That is a piece of cake job. If you've got the right cutter, of course, you know, it wouldn't even be hard even if you had to uh, use a smaller cutter and make a couple paths. But, uh, it is just a real piece of cake job. It makes a makes for a real clean installation. It's one of those things you got to be careful of when you take it apart that it doesn't go sprying and shoot the parts all over your shop. But uh, um, anyway, it's it's a 
it's a good uh, uh, good solution to the what to do for the extractor for a 338 Lapua. The uh, feeding I thought was going to be a problem. It really isn't. The follower on this gun is is uh, I had to pause it there for a minute. Try to get the follower out. The follower on this gun is a little bit different than uh, uh, your typical 700 Remington follower. This little piece right here is is uh, what they put on for the when they make the Ultra Mag and the Lapua. I'm referring to this piece of touching my thumb right there. All you need to do is I've in the process of making another one because I robbed this out of another gun, robbed this out of a, a, a 300 Ultra Mag. And what I'm going to do is I took a standard follower and I'm just building up this piece right here. And uh, I'm going to see if that works and I'm going to machine a solid one if, if that does work, I think. I don't know. Depends on how nice it looks and how light. It's nice it works when I'm done with it. The gun only holds um, two in the magazine and of course one in the chamber if you want to carry it that way. I, virtually never do but uh, um, it's uh, 338 Lapua is not something you go out and shoot 75 times out with anyway but uh, uh, I eventually will have a clip system on this there's no doubt in my mind I just want to research it a little bit before I I uh, uh, buy anything I bought a clip system on eBay for my 308 quite a while ago and it actually worked just great but inlaying it was harder than building this entire rifle that sounds ridiculous but you couldn't believe the problems involved in that it to get it in the right position with the bolt and uh, everything that you ended up with the uh, uh, the tabs behind the trigger guard and in front of the magazine box being way low uh, it was just a pile I hated it uh, I'm not going to mention the brand because I don't want to get sued, but I tell you, you got to be careful. Do your research before you buy a magazine conversion kit. I've been making my own lately uh, using the Accuracy International magazines, which are flawless magazines. I just love them. And, uh, um, and then I make my own uh, magwell. But, of course, that's time-consuming and... Uh, not for the faint of heart. Bye. This is my mortar. I don't know if I ever did any close-up views of the the thing after the uh, it got completed. Uh, that thing will put a 25-pound concrete ball into the stratosphere. Um, it'll shoot bowling balls too, but the concrete balls are what I really want to shoot out of it. And uh, a little hard to move. I don't know how much it weighs, but uh, the, the, my cat will just barely, barely pick it up. And I can't call haul my cannon and it on the trailer at the same time. It's just too much weight. Uh, it measures 44 inches across the muzzle. And uh, it's an eight and three quarter inch bore. Um, maybe actually, maybe it's eight and five eighths. There's Boondoggle. Hey, Boondoggle. This is my little milling machine. It's a bridge port. It's to see, it's got the short table on it. Uh, I use it uh, pretty much exclusively for revolver cylinders when I make revolver cylinders. Um, the uh, uh, you can see the little indexing head on it there. Uh, I was doing some weird, boring job, so I got it all cocked off to the side like that. I don't even remember what I was doing with it. Um, anyway, that's kind of nice because I can get the head clear off the side of the table, um, which I cannot do on the tree. Um, there's one of my old cannon targets. That's uh, 10 shots at 200 yards. I don't shoot 200 yards anymore. We don't shoot farther than that anymore, but uh, it's, uh, just, it was there for a time. It's a tree, two axis CNC. Um, it's, uh, I never use a CNC part. I'm just a hand cracker from the word go. 
Um, I don't, I'm not even sure the CNC part works anymore. Um, as you can see, I've got manual, manual DROs on it. Um, that that's what I use 99% of the time. Uh, like I said, call me a dinosaur, but uh, I love this machine. But because the head doesn't swivel or turn, you can never get it to where it's off the edge of the table. So I do have to use the other uh, the other mill for some boring jobs um, and uh, uh, extractor cuts, certain things like that. Uh, this is power feed every way, which is very nice and it's a good machine. I have a letter. It came from um, uh, used tool company and I have a letter saying that there's parts made on this machine that are now on Mars. The uh, couple of the parts that I've screwed up on this machine are several hundred yards away from the back door of my shop because I got mad and threw them out there but nothing I've made is on the summit. Um, it's uh, uh, 20 by 120. It, it's a it's a nice machine. Uh, it's not the best lathe in the world. Uh, I'm sure you could do a lot better, um, but it's uh, you can do a lot worse too. It's very accurate. Runs quiet. Um, the uh, shifts kind of hard. You really have to mess with it to get some to get it in some of the gear positions. It's not that they're worn or anything. It's just just the design. Right. Coastal Range in Central Oregon and uh, uh, we're doing the Lapua. Um, we're going to shoot 200 yards today. We're resetting the turrets to zero. Uh, we didn't do that last time we shot. Anyway, we're going to be doing that. The load we're shooting is a 300 grain uh, Sierra Match Kings uh, with 88 grains Rotumbo CCI Magnum Primer. I know that's kind of a light load, but that's the only load my Lapua will shoot. Now this one will probably shoot totally different, but that's one where... Where's loud bugger and about every three shots we're still in barrel break in uh, and uh, here you go okay the group center screen there this is 200 yard grouping um, and uh, we changed the sights, raised it up and moved it over, and then we shot this four-shot group with our last four bullets. Um, the four-shot group, I think we actually did some sight adjusting on that, but the gun is, is actually grouping real well. This, uh, this group here measures probably three-quarters of an inch center to center. Again, this is 200 yards, and we were bucking a pretty good wind, I would say. Oh, sometimes up to 10 miles an hour. I think that's, uh, um, but anyway, the gun appears to be shooting okay. Uh, my 308, which is a normally a quarter minute angle gun, shot that group right there, which isn't very good at all. But it, like I say, we're, the wind was coming up to the point, well, it blew my glasses off of the bench, my eyeglasses. That's how bad the wind was. So you probably hear it on the, the there's our wind ribbon, and uh, but the Lapua's bucked the wind pretty good. So anyway, that's that.